Hello guys, welcome back to Racketology. My name is Zach and today I'm going to be showing you how to string a ProKenix racquetball racket. Now before we get started, go ahead and, and check your machine. I don't know what type of machine you guys might have. Um, certain machines have their posts go out pretty far to where you can pretty much mount any racquetball or squash racket. Other ones will need adapters and mine does need an adapter. So if yours needs an adapter, you realize that you aren't able to fit your racquetball racket onto your machine. Um, Maybe there might be an adapter that the uh, seller might be able to uh, give you depending on where exactly you got your machine or from what brand. And if it doesn't, I wouldn't go ahead and mount it anyways just because it could start to you know deform and hopefully you know it doesn't, but it could have the possibility of also breaking that frame. So don't want to move on without having the proper equipment and making sure that it's going to be mounted properly and distribute that uh, tension evenly throughout the frame as well. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in, guys, and get started. Sorry about that. I actually <laughs> forgot to turn on my camera, so I was almost finished with the mains, but luckily I didn't tie off just yet. Uh, so right now we got our ProKenix racquetball racket mounted. And as you can see, it's been over to fixmyracket.com due to these carbon fiber patches. Um, I went ahead and pre-laced this before we actually mounted it onto the machine. And the reason for that is because these grommet holes are so far into the throat that it makes it a little difficult to actually kind of see it and get it while it's mounted. So I went ahead and just did that before. Now that we got that, we're going to go ahead and do our first pull on the mains. Mains for the Pro Kenix racquetball racket that I'm stringing right here is 20 feet by 18 feet for the crosses. So. As long as you do that, you should have enough for your mains and crosses. I'm stringing it here at 33 pounds. Now, unlike a lot of other racquetball brands, Pro Kenex, you can actually just do single pulls like how I'm doing for both, for all the mains, instead of having to do any of the double pulls that maybe you might see on some other racquetball brands. So don't worry about that. Pattern for this racket is a 14 by 18 with two shares at top and then two shares at bottom, so. Okay, now that we went ahead and reached our fourth, we're going to kind of make a little bit of a decision here, which is I'm going to take a look at the bottom of these grommets after I make this pull. And I'm going to see which one has the most clearance above and which one has the most clearance below on both sides. So, And the reason why is because this one's going to turn into a shared hole and these are going to be opposite of each other. So 
And this one looks pretty open on bottom. Mm, this one look like it's a little bit more open on bottom. So I'm just going to have to make a decision um, in comparison to the two. So I'm just going to go ahead and make this one the top. As you see, I'm taking my fifth main right here, and I'm bringing it back down the shared that came from my fourth main. And I went through the bottom, so I'm going to have to... So I'm going to go ahead and use a, a tool sometimes I find useful. Just a gamma pathfinder. Uh, so essentially, go ahead and insert, and then you kind of undo it, and you see how the tip kind of disappears. And we're going to insert it right inside, and then we're just going to follow it. And there we go through the top. It's not something that you need to use all that often, but every once in a while it's it's pretty good, especially for these racquetball rackets where if you don't get the string lined up the right way, then all of a sudden it starts to look all twisted. So So then because that one was above, this one is going to go ahead and go below. Once again, it's giving me just a tiny bit of trouble, so I'm going to reach for my Pathfinder once again. So this just got to go through the top. Alright, so I know that side's all good, and this one's going to go right through the bottom. There you go. So as you can see, once I go ahead and pull this, it's not going to cross over. And then with this one, with tension, it's not going to cross over. So this side is all up, this side is down. So let's go ahead and make our last pull.
then you're gonna go ahead and make your tie off on your third grommet at the throat. So first main, second main, third main. So right here. And you're gonna make a tie off for both your left and right side. This is going to be a two piece. There we go. Finished your mains. And the crosses are going to be really simple. So it's not really going to be any issue with those. All right, go ahead and grab your string for your cross string and do a soft weave. Okay. Usually I would just use a starting clamp, but I'm going to go ahead and just use a starting knot instead. All right, and there's nothing complex about this. After that, just go ahead and finish out your crosses. All right, go ahead and find your tie-off grommet.
make your knot. Trim them. And there you go. That's how you string a Pro Kenix racquetball racket. Or, well, a version of it. <laughs> and remember, this is going to be for the F series. It's also going to be for the Momentum Pro. And it's also going to be for the KI Tour. So it's all going to be the same type of string pattern on those, which is most of their mainline ones. So hopefully you found this helpful. Thank you so much for making it to the end of this video, guys. Go ahead and leave a like, hit the subscribe button. That way you can stay up to date on all the future content that we're going to be posting here. And leave a comment too. Let me know if there's anything that you want to know or maybe if there's a video that you want to see. That way I could explain it in full detail. Anyway, guys, take care and happy hitting.